Self-driving cars. Love them or hate them, someone way richer than you is gonna make sure they happen. But what about someone with less money than you? Well, that's where I come in. With the power of caffeine and off-the-shelf consumer hardware, I'm gonna give this self-driving thing a crack. Previously, I've used PPO to train our agents, but today I'm gonna to switch things up and use neuroevolution of augmenting topologies. It's a bit of a mouthful, but let me explain. Neat is an extension of standard evolutionary machine learning algorithms that does some extra cool stuff. We start off with a population of simple neural networks with a small number of randomly connected nodes. We then use the principles of evolution to make these smarter over time. Each network is given a fitness rating based on its success within the parameters of our training environment. With Neat, we don't have to specify the size of our network before we start training, only our inputs and outputs. This allows us to add complexity to our network over time by adding and removing neurons and changing the weights between neural connections as training progresses. Neat also uses a technique called speciation, where it will group individuals based on their action tendencies in order to create a larger pool of diverse data for the next generation to learn from. We also get to use a technique called crossover, where a child network can take the best part of both of its parents to improve on both of them. Mutations can occur between generations, which will randomly modify connections and nodes within a network. This is just another way to introduce new responses to an environment that might not otherwise happen naturally. Before we get started on the training, first we need to get some of the boring stuff out of the way. I'm utilizing an implementation of Sharpney, and I'm just taking the input from five raycasts in the front of the vehicle, which outputs the steering angle and the throttle amount that the vehicle is gonna take for its next action. Today, we'll be racing in the beautiful Portimao, the agent will calculate its progress via checkpoints that are spread evenly throughout the track. When the agent hits the final checkpoint, the lap will increase and the agent gets a big boost to its fitness score. To stop the agent from leaving the bones of the track, there are invisible walls around the perimeter which are tagged when hit by a raycast. This lets the agent calculate the distance to any walls in front of it so that it can avoid the fitness penalty on collision. One of the most important things to remember when implementing any kind of machine learning algorithm is to rid your project of every single bug you can find. If you don't, the agent will find them and they will abuse them. I became a victim of this and since I hadn't coded anything in to deal with non-regular vehicle states, I ended up with this fun little feature. I resolved this by switching to wheel colliders and checking if all four of them were in contact with the ground. If any of them weren't, then the agent could no longer control the vehicle. I could have reset the agent here for them to try again within the current generational trial, but the population was high enough that I just thought it was better to let them roll over and die. Now that we're up and running, it's all about optimizing the training to get the results that we're looking for. With the first few generations, the agent has no idea what it's supposed to do. So naturally, it just floors it in a straight line. Training with genetic algorithms takes a lot of time and patience, as you have to let each generation explore the environment with whatever information is contained in the network. Let's skip ahead 50 generations and take a look at what happens. You can see that we're getting past the first turn, but we haven't yet learned the shallower right angle or any left turning at all, so we're still struggling. Let's skip ahead another, say, 500 generations. Okay, now our Mustang Ouroboros is flying. You can see much clearer here the discrepancies between each individual agent within a generation. Each of them has a unique brain and are trying unique solutions in order to find a more optimal structure to pass down to the next generation. After all of the training, our brain looks a little bit like this. 19 nodes with 65 connections between them. Now this is a really small brain, but considering the simplicity of our environment, I'm not that surprised. If we introduce more variables or use a deep learning model like PPO, we would have a more complex brain structure and potentially more optimal actions, but then we wouldn't get to have the fun of playing God with evolution. If you like this video, you should check out this one here where I teach AI how to fly as well.